Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are going to build a new base album. I'm working on an album right now, and I've decided it's going to be nine by nine. So I didn't have a base. We're going to do this together. So um, you're, we're going to start with two 12 by 12 sheets of paper, um, and we're going to join them. And this is going to become the wrap of the album. So let's go ahead and do that. This is 3 8 inch score tape, but you can use whatever you like. Whatever makes sense. I'm going to straighten it out. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to wrap and go on the inside, but this is kind of my personality. <laughs> I want it to be as straight as possible. Okay, I'm going to have it come across. I'm following the line on my grid. There we go. And then we have just a slight overlap here. Let's go ahead and burnish this. Okay, now we need three pieces of chipboard. This is graphics medium weight chipboard. If you measure the side or the height of the chipboard, it is 1 16th of an inch. So that gives you some idea of the thickness. Um, so half of an eighth, right? So at 1 16th of an inch. So you're going to need three pieces uh, to build the book. Two nine by nines and one two and a half by nine. So the way I like to start is by laying down my spine and then creating a space or a gap for my covers. So let's go ahead and do that. On the back of the spine, I completely cover it with tape. I find that tape holds up best over time on anything that's moving around and the uh, spine and the pages get the most motion uh, of the book in the book. So can't look at the book unless you open it, which is going to cause some uh, stress on, on your spine and your covers and your pages. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take this all the tape off and I'm going to press it into place. But before I do that, I'm going to take um, this ruler and I'm just going to draw a reference line across the bottom. This is slightly over one inch. Um, the idea is you want to have enough paper left over to wrap around your chipboard. So and that's very crooked. I have to do that again. Or it looks very crooked. Maybe it's not. I guess it's just my glasses. Oh, no, I don't trust my glasses now. So actually, I'm doing about one and a quarter. I'm doing it lightly because whenever you're working with white, um, you can slightly see through it. So I'm just going to use this reference line uh, to line up the, um, the spine. And then essentially you want to line up the other two pieces based on the, the spine itself. So if you get the spine in crooked, the other two are going to go in crooked, but that's fine. As long as you've got an inch, you can recover. So even if I tilted it slightly one way or another, and we'll see that in the end if I do, um, as long as we've got an inch on the top and the bottom, nobody will know the difference because we're going to trim this nice and neat before we fold it over. Okay, so now this is my method, um, and I find it works best, and my spines and, um, and my cover pieces don't crack the paper. Now, it still can happen. It really depends on the quality of your cardstock. But what I like to do is take two pieces of cardstock, or not cardstock, chipboard, whatever you're using. If you're using a thicker one, whatever it is, stack two. Glue them together. This is going to become your spacer. So I just call this a little jig. It helps me decide where this is going to land. Okay. So I'm, I'm using what I've already installed as the line to move forward. So I can go ahead and erase this. It's nice to know, but sometimes, you know, it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you want to line up with these two lines. Um, so I'm going to use my spacer. And then I'm going to lay down the front cover and the back cover. And this becomes the, um, the base of the album. And then we're going to add a hinge system to it. So 
So I recommend 65 pound paper when you're wrapping over chipboard. When you go thicker, the um, chipboard tends to buckle when you're going against the grain and it tends to crack when you're going with the grain. So you need a paper that's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit more forgiving in that regard. Okay, so now I'm going to put this on here. I'm gonna push at an angle, keeping this in mind. And I'm actually gonna go this way. Um, I'm gonna push as hard as I can when I'm done. I'm not gonna lay it down just yet. What I'm looking for is to make sure that this can stand up on its own, and it is. And that gives me a minute to look at the top and bottom. And then I lay it in place, and there's our space. Okay, and we're just gonna repeat that process over here. If you're uncomfortable doing it on this side of the spine, just turn the whole thing upside down and then you can always return it to its uh, previous state after you get it in. Now I use um, tape here uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I don't wanna hold my wrap as it's drying because uh, it's a long space to, to hang on to. And um, also, Glue can sometimes warp white paper. White paper is not very for forgiving when it comes to, to glue. Now, if you painted your chipboard surface and then applied it, that's different. But if you try to do a squiggle line, it most definitely will show through your white, even though you're gonna put some designer paper on it. It's just something to be aware of. I like white albums. They are the least forgiving uh, because they're so easy to get dirty. Okay, so we have our front, our spine, and our cover. I'm gonna turn it over and I'm going to burnish everything in place. And I'm probably gonna take a break. Uh, no, we'll trim it first and then take a break and then go wash my hands. You have to really be careful not to carry anything onto your surface. Okay, now as I use the ruler down here to come up with my edge, I'm gonna do the same thing up here. And then I'm just going to use um, a blade a simple blade to cut it. Just cut, cutting the excess off. Oops, I didn't press hard enough. It always is a little bit harder right here where your tape is. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing on either end. And this is just, just so you don't have so much buildup on the inside. There we go. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do our marks for our miter. We're going to miter our corners. Let me put my ruler up real quick. So we're gonna pull back in this jig, the two piece jig. We're going to use it to draw a line and then we're gonna to trim to that line. And this should allow enough paper to wrap and not and to leave the um, corner completely covered, not exposed. But it's always better if you're insecure and uncomfortable, move that line out. You can always trim it afterwards. You cannot reattach paper. And no matter what you do, that chipboard even if you put a jelly roll white on it, it's just not gonna look like it ought to. Okay, so now I've got this here. My other rule of thumb is I'm gonna cut on this side, not on this side. I'm just gonna hand trim these. And I'm just gonna be slightly inside the line. Sorry, in some cases I may be off camera. remember if I pushed record. I did. Thank goodness. Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm going to add tape. I'm going to put this tool up. 
The nice thing is if you ever lose your jig, you just make another one, right? Because you're always going to have leftover chipboard. I'm going to clean up my visual space. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run tape along the top edge, uh, outside edge of all the white. I am using 3 8 inch score tape. You can use something wider if you like. Completely up to you. I think this is works just fine. I wouldn't recommend going any lighter. You could also, if you want to, use glue. If you're going to use glue, apply it to your chipboard, spread it, don't leave it in a bead, and then fold it over. Then the problem is you've got to hang on to it while it dries. So if you are going to use glue, make sure you get something that dries reasonably fast. So you don't have to spend too much time uh, chasing that around and holding it in place. Okay, I'm going to do top and bottom now, or left and right, I guess. <laughs> that was top and bottom. Okay. Oops. Okay, that's in. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put tape all the way around the outside edge. Now when we fold this over, it's going to reach past the tape that I put right here. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to start here. I like to actually stop my tape and start again here. Because if you don't, it makes a funny creaking sound every time you open your book. You can have a little of that from the top anyway. Okay, so I'm going to just show you real quick. So as you can see, as you fold it over, this is going to reach past this. So you really wind up with tape on both sides. Okay, I'm going to continue coming around the rest of the album. Sorry, I have to lean it against my camera stand. I don't have enough depth otherwise. So hopefully it's not shaking too much for you. Repeat that. I try to, uh, to the best I can, always move the paper to me instead of me to the paper. Um, first of all, I find it easier, just personally, but also it keeps my head out of your view so that you're not just looking at the top of my head as I'm reaching over to the other edge. So that does mean I have to move it around a little bit and occasionally bump a camera and I apologize in advance. Okay, we're gonna burnish this all down so that when we go to pick up the backing, it doesn't try to bring the tape with it. Okay. We are going to fold over the top and the bottom first. So I'm going to pick up the whole thing and start to train it just by pushing it over on itself. And you can see it's starting to create the bend. I like to rub it into place. Just the moisture and the heat from my hands helps it roll over the edge of the chipboard. Um, and the goal here is to get it to roll over fold it, wrap it in place without any of this cracking. So if you're feeling a little insecure about that, my one of the things that you can do to help ensure that it's not going to crack in this process is take a mixture of water and um, alcohol and do a 10 to 1 uh, with the alcohol and the finest mist you can and apply it to the part that you're folding over. So why the alcohol? The alcohol will um, speed up the drying of the water to prevent any possible warping of your paper. You don't want to soak it, you just want to barely mist it. That'll help break up the fibers in the paper. And that's what I'm trying to do just with the moisture and heat from my hands. So you don't want to rush this because 
having a cracked edge is you can't really recover from it um, unless you go back over and cover it again uh, with another layer of paper. It's kind of a big deal. It's not hard. You just have to be patient with it. So I'm just using my um, score tool to further um, create a crease for it to come around the chipboard. So just training it a little bit. And I'm going to go on the other side and do the same thing. So far, so good. The other thing I'm doing is I'm going, I'm going to bring this up. It's very difficult to see. I know white in this room. But if you look really closely, you can see there's slight buckles in the paper. And that's because I'm going against the grain here. On this side, it's going to fold right over and be smooth because I'm going with the grain. I did this on purpose because I want my spine to be with the grain and not against it. So I have less likely chance of buckling at the spine. Does mean that I get some ripples here, but they can all be worked out before you completely fold it over. It just naturally wants to create that little buckle. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying very hard to demonstrate it. I'm looking at the camera and I can't see it. But there's, you can just see it's not quite smooth right there. But once you work it with your tool, you can smooth it right out. You just have to be aware it's there. It's hard to see in the white. It shows up a little bit better on the blacks. Okay, I think I'm pretty good now. So the next thing is we're going to remove our tape and then we're gonna press from the center out. If for whatever reason we have too much paper, we definitely don't want it at the spine. We want it toward the outside of the book where we can deal with it in a number of different ways. But if it's all binding in here, it's much harder to deal with. You have to do a bunch of V cutting and silliness to try to deal with the bulk. Now, some people like to cut a V here. I don't. Um, I think it runs too much risk of actually getting into the back of the spine. And then that's, you know, another problem that you have to recover from later. So I'm going to run this across the edge. And now I'm going to run it across the top. And so far things are looking beautiful. Nice and crisp. Um, no cracks, no warps. Now I can fold it back over and remove my tape. And then this time when we fold it over, we're going to actually adhere it. Okay, I'm just going to peel back a little bit or anything that needs to grab right there. Okay, there we go. Looks good. Okay, we're going to repeat that process on this side. So first I'm going to start by making sure this is all coming in nice and square. It looks pretty good. I've got one little spot here that looks questionable. I think it's a little bit of tape. I'm going to come over, do the same thing, sort of fold up from the center out. I'm going to run my score tool across the edge to make sure it's pressed up against the chipboard and then I'm going to run it across the, um, the open face of the chipboard. The side that goes against the grain, you'd spend the most time working on. The one, these two that go with the grain, they're going to go down really, really easy, smooth. Okay, ready to take off our tape. And if you recall, we are going to push from the center out. 
This is a, a, a weed tool um, from my electronic cutter. If you don't have one, I highly recommend it. Um, almost all, all of the cutters have one. I call it a hook tool, but I can't live without it. Even though I have fingernails, that they don't seem to work on this. Okay, now we're going to start working, training. Whoops, I didn't burnish. I didn't. Oh, did I forget to take the tape off? I did. Huh, I forgot to take the tape off the, the paper. And that's one of the reasons why I love a hook tool. I can slide under and still get my tape backing off. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna work on the sides. So I'm going to get my paper to bend. So we're starting to create that crease. Okay, and we want our paper to stretch a little bit before we uh, uh, glue these down. So we want it to know where its final destination is, which is about right here, right? So we're just gonna work that a little and then I'm gonna use my score tool um, just to push this in a little bit. Don't be too aggressive. You don't want to poke a hole. And I'm using a, one of my fattest score tools. Okay. Okay, so this is what our closed position is going to look like, right? So we want it to kind of stay roughly in that position. So we'll just train it a little bit. And then I'd say we're ready to go ahead and start working on this. So again, the first thing we want to do is we want to fold it up. And you can do this by folding it over on itself or just do what I'm doing. Run your score right on the inside. Now I'm going to bring this up and show you something. So you can see I've got some excess paper here. And on this side, we're going to push this down straight down and you can use your score tool to do this too so that it is coming up and over up and over the edge of this chipboard so you're going to do that on all four corners and that's what's going to ensure that um, your corners are not exposed okay And you want to push it in as you're doing that because you don't want your excess on the outside. You want it on the inside if you have any. Okay. Okay, so that's what we've done. Now we're going to fold it again. And now you can see there's kind of a bulk here, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to fold that over. You're going to take your scissors. In this folded position, you're going to rest your scissors on the side. Raise it up, trim it. Okay, that's going to give you a perfect mitered corner. Okay, rest it on the side, raise up, and then cut away from the corner. Never cut into the corner. So as you can see, it's not, I left that sixteenth of an inch. That's what's wrapping around it. Okay. Never cut into the corner. You run the risk of over trimming. So I'm going to rest my scissors on this edge and I'm going to write it up on this edge and then trim. And look at that beautiful mitered corner. So you're going to do that two more times. I'm going to do it sitting down. <laughs> and then once you've done your trim, we will um, tape it all into place. One side always feels more natural than the other. But there they are, aren't they beautiful? Four perfectly mitered corners. 
and nobody taught me that. I learned that from experience. Everybody does it a little bit differently. Some people fold the corner in, then bring the sides up, and I find the corners to be too bulky in that in that way. If you're using um, book cloth, that's a perfect way to do it. That's the way I would do it. But if you're not using book cloth, I think it just too much buildup with uh, paper. So here I'm going to use a tiny bit of glue to make sure all of this you know, goes down and stays down. I'm just tapping it into my corners. And that's all you really need because you've got tape here and here. Just in case, because as you can see, there's a slight gap here where there is no tape. And that should be enough. And as you can see, I didn't have to do all that fussing to get this straight, and that's because I'm working with the, um, the grain and not against it. I forgot to show you how to figure that out. Got a little bit of tape exposed. Okay, so I'm going to show those to you. Those are my two finished corners. Okay. You can do it. After a while, this just becomes second nature. You have to build about three and then you don't even have to think about it anymore. Then all your effort goes into the interactive elements and a coordination of papers. This process is the same regardless of the size of album. Um, the only thing that might change is the size of the album and um, how many pages you know you put in it. So, but the wrapping and the creating of a hinge and all that, that's just a core part of album making. And if I would recommend a finished album that you could just modify, but honestly, every single time somebody comes out with one, I buy it and I'm just so disappointed. Um, they're not, I just haven't been happy with anything I bought. And I, I've tried every brand. I still think I can make it better than the ones I can buy. Although it would be nice because it certainly speeds things up. There is our nine by nine album. So that is the cover, the spine. So the next thing we're gonna focus on is what's called the hinge or the binding. Um, this is what's gonna hold our papers in place. Now I uh, wrote some notes, yeah. So I the way I like to do it is whatever paper I'm using, whether it's 12 by 12 or or eight and a half by 11, I like to score from the inside out because I like these two flanges when I install it in the book. These flanges are gonna be on either side and that further cements it in the book. Some people like the hinge to fit exactly in the score space, but then it's independent of the covers. It can sag, but it can also just fall out. There's nothing else holding it in. The hinge is the weak point in your album, so you don't want to skip or uh, not reinforce something if you can, because that is the weak point. All the weight of the book rests in the hinge. So, um, what, like I said, I like to score from the inside out. In this case, um, and in the cut list, which will be in the description, I used a 12 inch, just because it, I wanted the paper to match the um, cover um, of the album which I use 12 by 12 on. And as you will see, if you become a scrapper for very long, the color of white can vary. <laughs> so I wanted to be consistent. I normally use eight and a half by 11. In this case, I use uh, 12 by 12. So the first thing I did was cut it down to um, eight and three eighths. So it's eight and three eighths tall. Then I started in the center, which is six and then I split that, right? So my center is the gusset. And then I scored out. And I'll tell you what those score lines are. It's three and a quarter by three, three and a quarter. And then you're going to score a half inch, three and a quarter, three and three quarters, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, five and three quarters six and a quarter, six and three quarters, seven and a quarter, seven and three quarters, eight and a quarter, eight and three quarters. So that is with the 12 inch. If you are using eight and a half by 11, please refer 
to the description and I will have the um, score lines for both. They both need to be eight and three eight inches tall. And quickly, if you have the 11 inch paper, you're going to start at two and a quarter, and score every half inch until you get to eight and a quarter. But the detailed numbers between two and a quarter and eight and a quarter will be in the description. Please refer to that. So once you do that, you are going to do this sort of accordion. So you're going to build a, build a, a hill. Then you're going to have an open space, which is your gusset. Then you're going to pinch together. So you pinch the first two together, skip one. Pinch the next two together, skip one. Pinch the next two together, skip one, and the last. So that's how it's going to go. So you're going to have four mountains and three valleys if you don't cut, count this side. Okay? So right now, we need to do something to hold these mountains in place. So we're going to add tape on one side of each mountain and pinch it closed. You don't need tape on both sides because I'm just going to fold it over. And there's my first mountain right there. Okay, so I'm going to follow up and do that three more times. If I can find my tape. I'm about to run out too. So I normally add tape to all of them before I pinch them together. But because I'm teaching and I'm doing it slightly out of order, um, it, just because it's easier when, it's, you, when you can push it flat. So I'm going to do the next three without pinching it. Okay, there's the next one. I knew it. I knew I wouldn't get a whole one done. Inside, I'm going to make a bunch of racket. My goodness, didn't want to go. And then here's my last one. Okay. Going, let's burnish that. know this I've got a mountain here that's a skip so I'm not going to fold it this way I'm going to fold it this way okay so here's how it should look mountain mountain valley do have to fight it because the paper doesn't doesn't like what you're doing to it. Okay. Yeah, there's our four mountains and three valleys. We're going to burnish everything in place. Both ways. We're going to go one way, then we're going to fold it over and go the other way. And this will help to start it, start getting it to behave. Okay, now we're going to go the other way. As you can see, it's starting to lay flat. Okay, the next thing we want to do is measure the distance between these two points and these two points. That's because sometimes when you're doing this, each one of these uh, mountains does not, is not exactly the same as the other. So it could be wider on the top than it is on the bottom, and that will affect how you try to put it into the album. The other thing I like to do is split it so that you have half going one way, half going the other way, just because visually when we go to put it in the album, as far as I'm concerned, it's easier. Okay, this looks like eight. And maybe one thirty second. And this is eight. It's a little bit bigger. 
So what you can do is just stretch the top a little. And try to make it as even as possible. Okay, I'm right on now. These are both the same distance. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add adhesive uh, to the back of this um, to install it into, onto the spine in the book. I should have done this before I checked my measurements. Let's check it again. pretty darn close. So I'm going to add adhesives. I'm using tape. Why do I use tape building an album? Well, the more motion um, any part of your album has, the more important it is to have an adhesive that sort of lends itself to flexibility like tape. Glue over time actually will become brittle. Um, and when I say time, I'm talking about, you know, five, six years. So I've just had the best look. I've got some albums that are eight years old that I've used tape on and they're still holding up. I've got albums that I use glue on and my, my um, I'm constantly poking glue down it because it comes detached from the spine. Now ha having said all that, the glue I used was not um, art glitter glue, which is what I use now, but I just don't risk it. Like I said, don't, don't penny pinch on your binding because that's what's holding the whole book together. It's not really a book without pages. Okay. I'm using 5 8 inch just because it's faster. I've tried using a single piece of adhesive and I just find it too difficult to manage. Um, when I'm installing it I get wrinkles and I just get too frustrated. I, even though this is time consuming I find this to be a little bit easier. But if you can deal with a um, a sheet by all means. That's the only purpose this is serving. Okay, now remember these two side flanges that I'm taping further anchor the, the hinge into the book by attaching it not just to the spine but also to um, the front and back covers. Okay, here I'm going to just go a little lighter. I'm going to put one here, one in the middle, and then we'll be done. Then we'll be ready to install. folder just so that when you're taking off the backing you don't the tape doesn't want to follow it especially on your starting edge whichever side you start on because if you're going to pick up the tape and the backing it's usually when you start not midway okay let's pull our book back in okay now you can see the other reason I like to fold these out, oh, I've got a pencil mark there, um, is uh, in addition to having the three um, valleys or gussets in the hinge system, there's going to be one on the front and one on the back, and it's going to be a half inch, which co coincidentally is the size of the mountain. So by pressing it down, um, you can actually use it as a guide to your spine. So you want this score line to line up with the edge of this mountain or to center the two. It's going to be off a little bit because of the gap that we created with the tool, right? So we're actually trying to line up to this. It's hard to see the score line. I can see it, but then we're going to want to uh, center it up and down. So it's a little bit of both. Okay, so I'm just getting a feel for it. And the way I like to do it is to take two or three tapes off and then lay it down and then peel it back and take off tape as I go. I'll show you what I mean. This way, if you lay it down and you do it crooked, you're only trying to fight two or three strips that have been removed. 
let's do let's do four so I, I've taken off just the center pieces now I'm going to I have to stand up to do this so I can see both sides so I'm trying to line up down here and up here that looks pretty good yeah now if it didn't I've only got a couple pieces holding it into place and that looks really good I, I usually have to do it a couple of times so then you just press it all into place and now we're going to lift it up use our hook tool and start taking out tape and we just fold it over like a zipper and just pull it Now look how much more anchor we have. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to turn it around, make it easier instead of trying to reach over. So as I mentioned, it's 65 pounds for the wrap. I'm also using 65 pounds for um, the, uh, the hinge binding system. You don't want it to be too thick because you're actually going to install a page on top of these mountains. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna gently use our score tool and start to reintroduce that score line from the cover to the spine. And it's going to feel stiff at first. Just go slow. You don't want to punch a hole. Okay. There we go, yay. Okay, so there's two more things to do. One, if you like, you can use book binding tape, which is this, to go over the, the edges of your um, spine. Uh, again, this is where most wear and tear shows up first. Um, I think I'm going to do that, but not right now. I do have a video that just shows how to do it. Just as it's not in white tape. Unfortunately, white and black are the only two colors that this book binding tape comes in. But I use it most of the time. If you wrap this, that further reinforces the connection of the hinge system to the outside of the book. But also, if you have any cracking, it's going to occur underneath your tape. Nobody will know. So the last thing is we're going to make these pocket pages. I've already made three in advance, but we're going to make one together. So you're going to start, for each pocket page, you're going to need two sheets that are eight and a half by nine. Eight and a half by nine. You're going to score a half inch on the nine inch side. So you need two of those. So here's my second one. These are going to be attached to each other like so. You're going to fold in that score line and they're going to go like this and that's what's going to create the pocket. So I take just a little tab off so I can attach this as close to the corner as possible and that becomes my pivot point to line everything else up. Now I have a tool, it's called a tape tear tool, but anything that has a perfect 90 degree angle that's taller than what you're trying to line up, push it into it, slide the other piece of paper over, hold it in place, pull out your tape. That side's done. You only need to do it on one side because this side is holding everything in order. Remove the tape. And again, I'd like to do one quarter or uh, one corner at a time and then fold it over. You're going to want to press your paper down 
so you don't have a bubble when you open up so that your pocket page lays pretty closed. Now, if, you, if you're not careful and you just lay it down, you can get that. And that's hard to recover in the book. Now, we're not going to install these right now, but I'm going to show you how. You apply your score tape to the front and back of each one of the mountains. This pocket page then slips over the hinge, like so. Okay, so now it's slipped over the hinge and there's tape under it. I take my score, my uh, hook tool, I grab my tape and I pull it out. Why am I not installing it? Well, I prefer to do all my decorating of the pages outside of the book so that I have a super flat surface to work on. And then once it goes in the book, as you're building your, your pages and you're adding embellishments and interesting things, um, you start to get to a point where you're working, you know, like at a 20 degree angle. Um, not a flat surface. So I decorate everything and then install them in the books. But now you know how to make the pages, the hinges. And like I said, you apply score tape to the front and back of each one of these. And then um, depending on how you decorate um, your inside liner, you may or may not want to cut a piece of white cardstock that fits and covers. Um, this, I go back and forth. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, if you're planning to have your inside be white, then I would recommend trimming that out. I'm most likely going to put some designer paper. So that's it. So we've just made a nine by nine album. And um, basically to do, the, to do this tape, it's very difficult um, to, to work with on camera because I have to keep moving and it has to be close to me. And you'll wind up seeing the top of my head but i have done it on camera there is under tips tools and techniques a video that shows how to do this but you want to take a um a measuring tape not a ruler but a measuring tape you want to wrap it around and and get the distance get the circumference of the book you're going to take that number you're going to roll your tape out to that trim it, and then you're going to apply that tape in a single piece. So I start on the inside, wrap it around, and then come back. And like I said, it's hard for me to demonstrate that without you guys seeing the top of my head, but there is a video out there for you. But I am going to do that, and I am going to do it offline, because I'm, I can't say it enough. <laughs> this is the weak point in the album. <laughs> So the good news is if your hinge ever falls out, you can always build another cover and save your pages. So hopefully you never have to do that, but it is possible. So thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne for Scrap and Create. I appreciate you guys taking time to spend with us over here on our channel. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at contact at scrapandcreate.com or just leave me a message. I do my best to try to respond to YouTube comments and questions within a few hours. Thanks again. I'll see you guys soon.